Good morning. I'm going to be talking today about the blenders in Art Rage and how I use them in my watercolor work. I'll just say right off the bat that I think the blending tools in Art Rage are fantastic. And I think I've had a hard time finding comparable experiences with other digital art tools. I've just was never satisfied with what they were offering me. And um, I have found Art Rage to be exceptional in this in this regard. So I think that um, you should really take advantage of what Art Rage offers on this level. You have a lot of control. You get to lay down watercolors with your watercolor tool, and then you get to pick your blenders and decide how you want, essentially, that pigment to interact with water. That's really what the blenders are simulating, is that you're actually getting water on your canvas or that your bristles are pushing the pigment around. So I like that element of the control. However, most um, digital art programs um, blend, in my opinion, in a very smooth sort of way. I haven't been really satisfied with how they blend. This is an example. This instant blur is doing this for us now. It's often a very smooth gradient. feels very um, perfect. And now, on some level, I like this. It's a very smooth wash. It's just dispersing. I like that. And I'll often take the instant blur and just sort of blow out an area, push that pigment off, and let it disperse. Having said that, that's not really the only way that I want to blend. I want something with some visual grit that sort of represents this idea that pigment interacts with water and moves around. It doesn't do it in a perfect gradient. And that it might interact with the paper grain or my bristles and give me some um, you know, variety. So for that, what we don't use are these ones that have edge. These ones are all for um, painting with your, with your oil brush and whatnot. What we want is ones that, that use the wet the wet um, type. These ones like Hard Wet Blender, Harsh Chaos, Small Frost are going to give you some really interesting and useful results. I'm going to blow this up really big so you can see what it's going to do. Now I don't really use it like that, right? I just want you to see what it's going to do. What I really do normally is actually bring it down a little bit. and I begin to soften up my edge. And what I'm going to begin to get is something to me that looks much more like natural media than this sort of perfectly smooth experience that we have over there. That to me is really interesting. I'll often uh, start with a big brush and then come back over it with a small brush also. Now, I don't spend long on it, just a couple seconds. Just like you might do if you were bringing in some color and you were going to soften it out and pull it out. You know, So um, it's very much like the experience you have in natural media where you lay your pigment down and then you figure out how you're going to move it on your canvas. Am I going to blot this with a tissue over here? Am I going to bring my, bris my, my brush back in and soften it out? Whatever it might be, I just do that with my blenders. Here we have Harsh Chaos. You'll see that the difference is really negligible. They both just have a large drip spike. This one has an even bigger one. Let's get it really big so you can see what it does. So real kooky, kind of strange. I wouldn't use it at that size. But what I do use it as is a smaller size. Same idea. You can see what it's sort of doing here. You've got to go over it a couple times, and you definitely got to soften out the edge that's going off into the canvas. Now I would normally, like I said, I might come back in back over this and begin to soften it up just a little. But I think you can see the difference between these two are very similar in honesty. But in all honesty, but you can see the difference between these two comparative to this. I think this is very nice, but very smooth. Here we have some really interesting visual grit that lets you see, you know, how the paint is moving in relationship to the water and what would be normally the canvas. So small frost does something really similar. Um, not that big. How about, there we go. Now I'm going to come in. That's not quite big enough for us to really see. Let's get this extra big. There we go. So real peculiar little frost-like bits that looks like those things you, you uh, pop a tire with. So I don't want to use it that big. What I really want to do is shrink this. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and soften the edge. Now, just like before, you know, I want you to see that I can move the pigment around. The color gets can move. It's not like I'm done once I actually finish using my, my watercolor tool. I mean, the idea is it's still wet until we pick a new layer, right? That's going to simulate drying this layer. So that means in the meantime, I can push this around. You know, I can use my... I would normally be using my brush to do this. I might use um, a tissue to pick up pigment and move it around. I want you to also see I can push the color back out. You know, I can move it around. It's not done yet. And that's really what the blenders are offering you. So small frost is nice too. You can check out tiny frost. It doesn't do it for me, but some people like it. Um, but whatever the case is, this is how I'm using my blenders. Um, now, having said that, I'm only really using, you know, hard wet blender, harsh chaos, instant blur, and small frost. Those are the ones I'm using the majority of the time. I do, however, also use hard out smear. Now you'll see here it's a different kind of uh, type, right? Soft. Now what's interesting is that if I up the smudge factor, and I can begin to pull the pigment down the page or wherever I want it to go. And I think you can begin to see why I like this. This to me is really representative of the idea of tilting my board. Now I'm on a slightly underpowered PC, tablet PC. So you might have better results on a, um, a desktop. But I'm just going to sort of sweep this around and you're going to get a sense of what I'm talking about. It, it's can be very nice. One of the nice things I like about it is it doesn't just do it in some sort of digital perfect straight line. Rather it allows you to twist it and turn it and get some interesting effects just like you might do if you were actually um, you know, tilting your board and you wanted to do different things. You don't just tilt your board one direction necessarily and, and the pigment doesn't necessarily move in just one direction. So the higher the smudge the longer I can pull these little strands before they begin to um, become transparent. The lower the smudge, um, the slower the program becomes, and the, long, the shorter the distance it'll pull it. But I'm sure you can see that's a technique that you might want to duplicate because that's a result you might want to achieve. And I love the fact that I get to have some control, or at least, over where the pigment goes and that it can run. This to me is a far more useful tool than some of the other digital art programs that allow you to do running. This, I um, have been much more satisfied with this experience compared to others. So that's basically it for now. I'm going to be doing a small video um, on how to make other preset groups and how to essentially not have to look at all of these other presets and instead have a special preset group just for your watercolor tools. I'll be going over that in a small sort of supplementary video, but for now that's the gist of how I use my blenders in ArtRage. There's a link down in the, um, the description below that will take you to a form that discusses how different art programs blend and um, how they blend with trans um, opacity and how ArtRage blends with transparency. This is one of the major reasons. He doesn't actually go into why ArtRage does this. He describes Paint Tool Psy. But the truth is ArtRage and Paint Tool Psy um, are very, very similar on in this manner on this matter. So what it means is, in a nutshell, if I make this um, painting have uh, a background that is not a canvas, you can see that ArtRage blurs out basically into full transparency as I blur it. And this is very, very useful and is not the way other art programs work. They blend with transparency, which essentially means they, if I was blending out this blue, it'll begin to blend things by actually bringing in more white to have it look like the canvas. This can become a problem. You'll see you'll see pictures if you decide you want to go to that form. ArtRage does not do that, and that allows you to use your layers and um, your blend modes to different effects. You, it's very mobile. You can move things around, and they'll be laying on each other in a way that represents, in my opinion, much better the experience of blending and transparency in natural media where essentially every glaze is like a glaze of water on a clear sheet of plastic or a clear sheet of glass and as it disperses it just becomes 
you know, less opaque. And ArtRage does this. Now, if you've only been using ArtRage, you might think, you might take that for granted. But the truth is that's actually something it does very well that a lot of other programs don't. So, in short, the blenders are awesome. You should use them. And to good effect, in my opinion, I think it's an exceptional element of this program. And I couldn't imagine painting my watercolors without them. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.